today a topic of discussion is on digital products and online frauds a journey from vulnerable to impenetrable while we were selecting this uh, topic of discussions uh, we we had uh, several other trending topics to be to be considered like uh, ai was there then we had chat gpt cbdc inflation embedded finance and few more uh, we were told that a topic like online fraud is not that fashionable uh, why don't you select a topic which is attracting lot of media attention or chasing or a topic which is chasing lot of vcp money uh, however we had a very different uh, view on this uh, what we saw is that today uh, most of our activities are being done online and what are we thinking while doing the online products or a digital platform you know uh, we we are escaping unwanted messages we are avoiding unwanted calls we are worried about misuse of our online entity uh, every time we log in into the into a bank's website we are worried whether it's a correct website or not if we go to the atm and try to withdraw the cash we are worried whether our card will get cloned if there is any some equipment which is being fitted there which can just take away all the credentials if we get a friend request we are worried whether it is a honey trap and when we get any delivery of any any courier which is coming in and he asks for a otp we are worried whether it is a, a request money kind of otp and there are several other concerns which keep coming to us uh, uh, every day so undoubtedly the topic of uh, discussion today uh, that uh, a journey from vulnerable to impenetrable for a digital products and online fraud is a right topic and uh, and the, the and the and the very we have a today a very powerful panel you know the people who have built industries who have given several policy level uh, you know guidelines to the entire bfsi industry and their views would be very very valuable to us in fact i would say that this topic should be discussed in each and every forum globally you know to make the the digital transactions safe now uh, the today the questions that we are going to ask are the questions that were discussed uh, in the fiax community the question that we started with was uh, mr malikarjun rao was uh, during the launch uh, of the educational content uh, anuradha mentioned uh, that uh, in the rural area the access uh, you know the people able to access the qr code pay based payments or p2p based payment is 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 there at ease in doing that whereas Correct. when it comes to reporting a fraud you know majority are unaware in fact uh, it will not be exaggeration to say that in fact whoever people anuradha and i met none of them knew how to report the fraud fraud so uh, so uh, my question to you is do you see this as a deliberate attempt by the banks and the fintech to make registering the complaint difficult and the reason i say this to you is uh, uh, is because uh, senior management is completely focused on the customer acquisition it is focused on getting sales revenues and the board is constantly questioning them about this so they spending time on all these is not a productive thing so do you see a possibility of uh, of regulatory authorities playing a role here where they can bring the attention of the senior management back on these important issues by publishing industry wide fraud analysis or reports of various various digital products that are launched by banks and fintechs and and uh, you know and also creating a platform to celebrate the zero fraud products of the product managers of this institution so uh, this was a question that uh, was uh, there in the community and we look forward to your views on it all right first point is there is never a deliberate attempt on the part of the fintechs or the bankers with respect to accepting the fraud or processing it in a time bound manner what we have to understand very clearly is qr code is only codification of two end points one is origin the person who wants to send the money and the other is the destination where the money has to reach it is a very clear cut codification of origin and destination making it simpler without uh, allowing or without uh, for the person to enter the details so we should not be misunderstanding that qr code can even take care of everything it is only when you know that you have to make the payment from 
one person to another person, QR code takes care of it without entering the details of the particular customer's account number or otherwise because QR code displays. And the moment you scan it, your account is already captured as such and credit or transfer of money is happening immediately. With respect to fraud, it is not as easy as we can understand the QR code. Number one, as rightly pointed out by Mr. Samamurthy, there are a lot of frauds occurring, particularly with the compromise of identity of the customer. Unknowingly, he is not aware that he is compromising on the identity. As a result, the moment identity is compromised, the fraud is perpetrated. After it is perpetrated, and by the time he realizes, the money gets transferred through various layers and it is withdrawn. So, however effectively you take the call immediately, when the cash is out of the system, it becomes really very difficult for the customer to get back the money, number one. Number two, he is involved in a process which is coming I mean, to the process in the RBI as well as various banks and even fintechs have worked very hard in bringing about simplicity in capturing the important required details to be entered or indicated or informed for the sake of taking forward the customer resolution. There is no laxity on the part of the management of banks or fintech companies. Even RBI as a regulator is more concerned about the frauds which are happening particularly in the lower value segment. Rightly pointed out by Mr. Samamurthy, because the confidence will be shaken if people in rural area or otherwise who are indulging or who are activating these transactions with a smaller value. Having said that, it is definitely a process where improvement is possible to be undertaken but the nature of complexity involving the amount transferring from one place to one bank to another or few more banks is very complex in nature to take care of the complaint to be redressed immediately and getting the money back. We have seen in many cases money has not come back. Very few cases the money comes back to the customer only because he is able to comply in right time and the amount has not got out of the system and the lien marking is done through the different banks and accordingly, money has come back even though it has taken a couple of days. So what is the remedy for this? Remedy is number one, awareness. There should not be any way the customer compromises on identity or clicks on unknown areas or reacts to unrequired, uh, what you call, uh, unrequired, and, and there is no requirement for him, but unnecessarily is clicking on that or reacting to that. This awareness is required to be, uh, what you call, spread across among all the users. Second is, the measures taken by the regulator, measures taken by the stakeholders like banks and fintech companies need to be a little more pronounced, little more activated in such a way that the customer is able to get the reply without he going across various locations or various authorities to get the reply. So these are the two measures. I'm sure the work is in progress, but large activity is still expected to be done in order to get very uh, what is a mature position where the frauds in number and um, put when the canvas of digital payments is increasing everywhere.